Thanks for clicking on Wayne.com for this week's edition of Inside the Zone. As always, Blake Sebring gracing us with his presence to talk Commons Hockey. And we were talking just a few minutes ago before the show. There's not a whole lot you can yeah. nitpick. Like, I mean, little things right now that, that maybe um, they're not doing perfectly. But my goodness, the Comets are playing some great hockey. Well, like last week we talked about, we wanted to see them work on their defense. So they give up seven goals in three games. And really, they shut them down. I mean... The one game was four to three or whatever, but I mean, but really there wasn't much threat there. I mean, it just, it seems like they are su in such a role that they can turn it on when they want and really dominate opponents with shots and puck control. They still got to work on the turnovers in the offensive zone. I mean, but you know, and, but this is becoming one of the epic seasons in Comets history, 29, eight and one since November 19th. I mean, like you said, there's not much to nitpick. I was going to say, when you look at the you look at the small picture, you look at the big picture. Nine zero and one in their last ten, obviously Which fantastic. Which is incredible considering how sick they've been. You know, I how, mean, how do you mean like illness? Oh, wise? flu! They've got the flu going through them like crazy. Really? Oh yeah. I mean, they had five guys sitting out Friday night in Wheeling and still won that game. Um, you know, they had and Trevor Cheek scored two goals when really he shouldn't have played, but you know they needed a body, so he, they played one short. And then he doesn't play Saturday, and they still win. I mean, it's just ridiculous the things that they are overcoming. And a lot of that is that chemistry and camaraderie we've talked about since November. I mean, they are just a tight-knit, close team that, that finds ways to win. You know, I mean, they, even when they go into the third period, they're down a goal. It's not a big deal. You know, they just keep chugging away, and, and they come out and score two goals, bang, bang. And that's it. It's over, you know. And, and the way they went after C.J. Mott, they made the adjustments. They didn't let him out of his crease so he could cut down all the angles mm -hmm. all the time and stuff. And they sent two guys to the net instead of one. I mean, they scored two goals in the first, what, seven minutes or something like that. I mean, they just kept – they're doing exactly what Gary asked them to do. You can see that trust developing there between him and them. And, and they're like, okay, this is going to work. Or him and Ben or whatever Benny Boudreau comes up with too. And you can see it. It's like, boy, you'd like to see the power play get more consistent. Mm -hmm. But it's not like you don't think it's going to happen. You know, right. it's not like you think, well, they don't know what they're talking about. That's just not going to work. You know it's going to work at some point because the talent's there and they trust each other. And, the, and you can see hints of it. And if it ever gets going, oh, my goodness, look out. They could, of course, score seven goals a game, you know. Well, you said you had mentioned Trevor Cheek just a little while ago. Just, just what – what kind of player is Trevor? Because he's been fantastic since he's been recalled from Tucson and I'm or, or sent down from Tucson, and he's a guy that just skill-wise, I think, is one of the top guys. I think you'll find. I think he likes playing wing. Yeah. You know, whenever he's come back to Fort Wayne in the past, they've put him at center and he's taken a lot of faceoffs. Well, Justin Hodgman's there, so it kind of like everybody's focused on Justin and mm -hmm. Trevor gets to do whatever Trevor wants, and Trevor's really good at that. You know? Trevor likes that. I he's imagine. good. I mean, he's free. I mean, he can he can skate and he can beat everybody down the ice and and he can just go fire and and you can tell he's confident right now with some of the moves he's trying. It's like oh god no don't oh man that was cool how did you do that you know I mean you would never tell somebody to go out and try some mm -hmm. of those things, but he just feels so confident and he's got such space ahead of everybody else he can try them and it works you know. Uh, Desjardins or. I've heard Gary pronounce it Desjardins. I mean, what is, do you think? Desjardins. Okay, Desjardins. What do you think uh, has really been? Gabe, you know. G <laughs> Gabe. Oh, oh, our good buddy Gabe. That's right. Oh, Gabe. Um, the attack dog. Yeah, he's been fantastic. Um, this past weekend, he set a new career high for points in a season. It's like points half in a the season. team that's already set career highs. I, I know, Garrett Thompson, I think, We're just 21 games away from the end of the season, week. and I think it's up to 10 or 11 guys now have career high in points. Well, that is a byproduct of how quality they've been on the ice. And I think it's, a, it's also a, a, a byproduct of how people come here and they get better. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like they come here, they sit, they don't play, they don't do anything. They work hard in practice. They work on specific things in practice, and they get better. It's amazing how, you know, we kind of take that for granted sometimes. But the program works, and people do get better. As they say uh, on Twitter, trust the process. Trust the process. Embrace the grind. Uh, rise and grind. Yeah, there um, you go. But with the Jordan, we're talking about 50 points already, 24 goals, he's plus 30. 
uh, part of that is he, he's been on a quality line. But where have you where have you seen his his biggest? Um, you, those are first line numbers. Okay? Yeah, right. But he's not playing with Sid and Bats and Thompson. You know, I mean, he is playing on the quote unquote third line right now. But he is just so freaking hungry. I mean, every shift he's out there, he's the first guy off the bench, and he's flying. I mean, I call him and, and Marcotte and Cravy uh, and then Shaffy if he's playing. They're like attack dogs on the forecheck. I mean, they are just driving teams crazy because they can't get rid of the puck fast enough, which is creating the turnovers mm -hmm. and the scoring chances. I mean, it's incredible. And he's leading that. He is the guy who's in front of everybody else, it's like, oh, crap, get rid of it, you know, because he's coming, and he's not slowing down at all. That kind of plays into what I wanted to talk about in terms of shots. This is kind of interesting statistics to me. They lead the ECHL to the comments at 37.7 shots per game, and defensively, they're sixth at only giving up 29.7 shots per game. So there's a difference of eight shots per game, almost three shots per period that the comments get more so than their opponents. Oh, look at the third period. It's even worse. Well, I mean, th those are just numbers, and they look crazy <laughs> to me. Well, what on the ice, what does that mean to you? That means, that means puck control to me. That means that they are, uh, they are controlling the game. They are spending the majority of time in the opposing defensive zone, in their offensive zone, and they are controlling the tempo. They're controlling the pace. They are, they are basically making the opponents play their game. How beneficial is that in the long term? And can you keep up that kind of, sure. that kind of gap throughout the, well, look rest at of the this season way. and throughout the playoffs, too? Look at it this way. Every team's weakest area is defense. There's a reason the Comets sign four or five defensemen right off the bat in the summer. Um, because everybody now is looking for defensemen. They can't even find one with Dan Maggio up. So that's why they got Jamie Shaftsman playing defense when mm -hmm. Cody's got the flu and all these injuries. And he's doing spectacularly well. But you can't even find one on a lower level now because everybody's picked over it. So you basically go with a forward, your captain, playing defense. That tells you how good your defense has been as well. But even then, that means everybody else's defense is that weak too. They're even weaker. And the Comets' defense is strong. So they're, they're getting more comfortable playing into the offensive zone too. Another thing it tells me is that the forwards are using the point men mm -hmm. extremely well. I mean, they go down low and it's like oh he's open bang or you know they're if you watch the games too they're doing really really well the guy circles around the net behind this into this corner he's passing it to the opposite point and it's like the defense is like oh uh, and they're flabbergasted they're not sure where to go sometimes mm -hmm. and that opens up the shooting lanes as far as this week goes uh, we talked a little bit about it before the show two games at greenville friday and saturday no, here Oh, excuse me. Two games here right, against Greenville. Ring. Yeah, that's right. Um, Brian Gratz gets to come home. Gratz gets to come home, but a, a trap game is, is one of the things that I had mentioned to you uh, because oh, no. they're playing so well. No, because I'll tell like you this why. Could be I'll like tell a you why. A trap week oh heck no! Based on where Greenville I have a, is in the standings. If they're down after the first period Friday night, yeah. Gary Gary Graham is going to light them up. Yeah, he is not losing two games to his best friend. It is not going to happen. I mean, he will go after them. They all know it. I mean, right now, the coolest thing about watching the Comets is watching them make adjustments between periods. It's like they get stronger as the game goes on. And, and they like, okay, enough screwing around, enough playing around. We're going to actually enforce the game plan now. And then the second and third periods is when they're taking over. So what are you most looking forward to about this weekend, about what you're going to see from the Comets in Friday nights and Saturday nights? Game? I want to see if they can continue the defense that they've really worked hard on. I want to see them cut down on uh, turnovers high in the offensive zone. I mean, how many times have guys tried to make a tricky play and, oops, there it goes, you know, and mm -hmm. then, and then I, I really want to see, uh, I just want to see them keep having fun. I mean, I want to see them get healthy. You know, if they get healthy and they can put their normal 10 forwards out, and play six defense, you can see what the competition has been like during the games. I mean, Logan Nelson got to play this weekend. Zach LaRaza got to play this mm -hmm. weekend. And those guys were going hard. Yeah, LaRaza Because they know well Saturday. they got limited opportunities, and they got to make the most of them to stick in the lineup because it is so good right now. 
I'm just enjoying watching that kind of stuff. I thought, you're right, LaRaza played great this weekend. I thought he was outstanding. And I thought, you know, Nelson, you know exactly what you're getting with Nelson. He is such a strong player, and he's great on faceoffs. And I noticed this weekend, too, he was knocking guys silly. I mean, but he has to to maintain his spot in the lineup and try to keep it. Gratz and Graham, good friends. It seems like a good idea for an article. Yeah, maybe I don't know. tomorrow. I don't know. I might have to get on that. Oh, you know? maybe you should. Because I always wait till the last second. Right. You, know? you should think about it. You yeah, should think maybe. About it. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, the, let's face it. I've got the whole Gratz family waiting for this article. <laughs> well, there you go. And everybody watching It was so much now. fun. It was so much fun to write, too. I mean, we did it last summer when Brian was home visiting and got to see the baby and stuff. And, and, and these guys go back a long way. And they, they are bonded. They are connected. There's some neat stuff in it. All right. Well, we'll touch on that next week as well. But for this week, he's Blake. I'm Glenn. And we'll see you next Monday on Inside the Zone.